Ball straight into the roof of the net. Nice one. Straight down the middle. So a good performance in both teams. Hello and welcome. You're watching First Sports. I'm Rupa Ramani. Let's get started. Right on the show today, Arshad Nadeem, the athlete whom Pakistan had forgotten about, had failed to fund, is suddenly being showered with awards and rewards from a country that is finally waking up from its slumber. The Prime Minister is being trolled even as political leaders scramble to do some damage control. Is this glory Nadeem's or Pakistan's? And we get to the story of Sifan Hassan, the athlete who won a marathon gold in what many consider the toughest marathon in the world. One who even the great Kipchoge failed to overcome. And in a mighty show, she also stood up to receive the gold wearing a hijab. Also heading away, the breaker who broke the internet with her controversial routine. Was it fair to critique her or is it artistic expression? The Aussie Prime Minister has had to step in with a statement. Anthony Albanese has come out showing which side of this raging debate he's on. Stay on for that and more, but first, a look at the headlines. Starting with news from the Olympics, USA's appeal to reconsider stripping off Jordan Chael's bronze medal has been rejected by Court of Arbitration for Sports, or CAS. This after CAS declared Romania's Anna Barbosu as the winner in the gymnastics floor event. CAS said that the rules do not allow for decisions to be reconsidered, even if conclusive new evidence is presented. Over in football, Manchester City's hearing on 115 alleged breaches of Premier League financial rules has been moved up to September from November. The hearing is expected to last 10 weeks, with the verdict likely in early 2025. Man City has denied any wrongdoing. Over in tennis, Australia's Alexi Poprin won the ATP Montreal Masters title, def defeating Andrei Rublev 6-2, 6-4. This is Poprin's third career title. Following his victories at the 2021 Singapore Open and 2023 Croatia Open. The match lasted less than 90 minutes. Poprin with this win reaches a career high ranking of 23rd in the world. News from the Paralympics. Shuttler Pramod Bhagat will miss the Paris Games due to a breach of anti-doping regulations. Bhagat has committed three whereabout failures within 12 months. He's been banned for 18 months. Because of this, the ruling was made by the anti-doping division of the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Bhagat had won gold for India at the Tokyo Games in the men's singles event. Do you remember the story of the boy who cried wolf? The kid kept pranking the villagers till one day there came an actual wolf and the villagers just didn't turn up to save the sheep. Arshad Nadeem's case is somewhat like that, except there was no pranking, no jokes here. Here was a boy who was in desperate need of funds. Nadeem needed his people, his country, the government, the sports authorities to pay heed to him, to listen to his cries for help. Like the appeal Nadeem made just earlier this year when he literally begged officials to give him the necessary help he needed in getting the right equipment to travel and train for the Olympics. When I started off in 2015, competing in international events, I got this javelin. For an international athlete aiming to win a medal in the Olympic Games, you need proper equipment and training facilities. It has now got to a stage where the javelin is damaged and I have asked the National Federation and my coach to do something about it before the Paris Olympics. This despite winning a Commonwealth gold in 2022 and a World Championship silver in 2023 the very next year. What did they need Nadeem to do more to prove his worth? No one came. Why would they help a lone javelin thrower? What glory can Nadeem possibly earn Pakistan? Nadeem, in fact, went ahead and won gold, the country's first gold in track and field and the first ever individual Olympic gold medal ever for Pakistan. How did he make this happen? How did Nadeem do this? One, of course, his own grit and talent. He looks effortless as he runs in. His height is a clear advantage, but he has honed his skills. And that brings me to two, his mentor. Very few of those in his corner. One became his inspirational, spiritual father, rather, Rashid Saki, who was there with him through it all, from the time Nadeem would chuck bamboo sticks 
fashioned with the bent iron that he got curated by a local ironsmith to striking gold at Paris. The journey has been hard. Three, of course, most important funding, not by Pakistan government, not by the sporting authorities in the country or by political leaders, but by well-wishers. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It took a village to raise this Olympic champion. His neighbours, people who just heard of his dream and came forward to help him. Distant relatives, all pooling in money for him to travel, to buy a new javelin, to train. He wore second-hand shoes when he won gold at the Punjab Youth Festival in 2014. An official in an athletics meet in Nadim's town, Mian Chanu, saw him wear torn shoes and got him a pair of shoes instead. Arshad never trained in a gym for the longest. His mentor got one of his close friends who owns a gym shop to get Nadim to train there, in a shop that sold gym equipment. That's where Nadim trained, because the municipality gymnasium had no facilities. The town did all it could to help Nadim, help him realize his dream. Nadim started getting noticed only after Tokyo, but even so, no proper funding really came in. Now, after the gold at Paris, the floodgates seem to have suddenly opened up. The Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif was quick to post a picture with an old photo of him giving Nadim a cheque. That too, for just 1 million Pakistan rupees or $3,600. That doesn't even cover the cost of a javelin if you broke it in two. And the Prime Minister was massively trolled, not just for this, but also posting a video of him watching the javelin final, like he was invested in Nadim. The Chief Minister of Punjab, Mariam Nawaz, announced a cash prize of 100 million Pakistan rupees, close to 359,000 US dollars, also saying that a sports city will be built in his hometown and named after Nadim. She went a step further and gifted him a car with the number plate 9297, the distance Nadim threw in Paris to win gold. Politicians doing their best to make sure their names are attached to Nadim's glory. Pakistan People Party's Sindh government announced 50 million, which is around 180,000 US dollars. Sukkur city mayor has promised a gold crown. Well, Nadim has already won the crown, hasn't he? He's a world champion. Little good this golden hairpiece would do him now. I guess the larger point of the story is there's no point in bolting the stable doors after the horse has run away. Nadim had no one but his villagers, the town who believed in him. And that was enough for him to move the world, set a path for himself and fight for glory. Officials in Pakistan, political leaders all coming in with the awards and the rewards now after he's won the gold just looks a little silly. An attempt to get their names associated with the glory that is deservedly Nadeem's and his alone. It isn't Pakistan's because the country did not do anything when he needed them the most. If only athletes were encouraged, recognised and groomed in the earlier years. That's how you build a sporting culture and cultivate a future. Then again, maybe Arshad Nadeem needed this stepchild treatment compared to the Pakistan cricketers for him to truly realise his potential and inspire a new generation of athletes who will also look at Javelin as a possible future career option and not just cricket. From being a teenage asylum seeker from Ethiopia to now one of the most decorated Olympians, the story of Sifan Hassan is an inspirational one. Hassan turned heads after sweeping bronze in 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter events at the Olympics, but her gold medal in the women's marathon made a louder statement. With this gold, she clinched a medal treble at Paris Games, and this was her first gold in the marathon event. After Tokyo's 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter goals, Hassan now has conquered the marathon, making her the first female athlete to win goals in all three categories, all three long distance events. And she achieved this record in some fashion. Hassan broke the Olympic record by finishing the marathon in less than two hours and 23 minutes. And as they say, nothing comes easy in life. Hassan had to fight it out till the end. The Dutch athlete had taken a crazy gamble, a crazy ploy. She competed in the 10,000 meter and the marathon, which were just two days apart. Now, you don't need to be an athlete to know that it's a hard act to follow through on. The long distance races are never easy and you need time to revive your body and your energy. Two days are not enough, especially for a marathon like this, because many experts describe the Paris Marathon as a difficult one, more arduous than New York and Boston, considered the toughest in the world, the benchmark for marathon events. And just to paint you a picture of how difficult the marathon really was, the fact that Eliud Kipchoge couldn't claim it is enough proof. 
the great Kipchoge, who has four Olympic medals, which includes two goals in marathon, couldn't finish the men's marathon, a first in his storied career. Kipchoge even called the marathon as his worst ever. That was how difficult the Paris marathon was. Hassan took a gamble on this turf and pulled off a miracle win. She says, what was she thinking? Now, she did it for legacy, of course, for glory, for wanting more than what others felt that she was destined to get. And it wasn't just the heat in Paris or the fatigue of racing in three different long-distance events that really tested Hassan. The silver medalist, Asefa, elbowed the eventual champion towards the end of the race, pressing her up to the railing and almost derailing her. But if so many factors couldn't stop Hassan, couldn't elbow jab from a rival do much? It acted as a spark for a flame that burned bright. Asefa finished three seconds behind Hassan and, will, and while these factors are enough to create a buzz around the Olympian, Hassan's victory transcended beyond the tracks, not because of the colour of the medal that she'd won or the records she broke or even the fighting spirit she displayed, but because of the acts that followed right after finishing it all. Despite France banning its own athletes from wearing the hijab during the Games, Hassan proudly stepped onto the podium to collect her gold medal wearing the religious garment. Proud and resolute in her identity. The identity that has in a way inspired her to be the champion that we see today. Fans all across praised Hassan for this act. Many also interpreted it as a protest against France. Hassan's bold gesture became a powerful act during the Paris Games. She competed without the hijab, but she chose to don one during the medal ceremony to make a point. It's like Hassan was letting France know that a person shouldn't be restricted from following one's own, one's own beliefs, whatever they may be. She asserted her right to wear what she felt like in her proudest moment at the Games. And with confidence of an Olympic champion, the hijab posed a fitting tribute to what Hassan stood for. During her refugee phase as a teenager, Hassan called herself a flower that got no sun. And now a 31-year-old Hassan with her six Olympic gold medals, yes, six, two world championship goals and a fighting spirit to match it all. She is the sun that is lighting up a polarised world that pushed her to get here. And nobody remembers who came second. It's of course a very famous face, phrase often used in sports to try and inspire players. But the Paris Olympics had something else to say. More than the winners, it was the second place finishers who got more attention. Whether it was Turkish shooter Yusuf Dikech, Korean air pistol silver medalist Kim Yeji or Simon Biles. And breaking, which was making its Olympics debut, went a step further. At the centre of a, a discussion, a raging debate, was an athlete who finished last. Aussie breaker Rachel Gunn, also known as B-Girl Reagan, her unique, rather controversial performance generated a meme fest online. But the breaker is standing firm despite all the mocking and has also received support from Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. Take a look. There were a lot of expectations when breaking was announced as an Olympic sport this edition. Internet was a bus waiting to see what would unfold. Everyone wanted to be wowed by this new sport, and in some ways it did not disappoint. But it did fuel one heated topic that has only gathered more moss. When Aussie B-girl Reagan took part at the Paris Games, little did she know of the torrential responses that would hit her. Reagan, on her part, was trying to get her unique spin to breaking. So she pulled out some moves like kangaroo hopping and swimming on the ground. Yes, it feels kind of funny when I spell it out that way, but the internet clearly wasn't amused with Reagan. She received shock, surprise, and some people rebuked and mocked her. 
The internet can be a cruel place and it surely became a haunting one for Reagan. But the bee girl is standing her ground and isn't too bothered about the memes. I was never going to beat these girls on what they do best, their power moves. All of my moves are original. Creativity is really important to me. I go out there and I show my artistry. Sometimes it speaks to the judges and sometimes it doesn't. I do my thing and it represents art. That is what it is about. The criticism also stems from the lack of knowledge people generally have about breaking. Unlike other sports, breaking is not restricted to a set narrative. There is room for creativity and that's what Reagan took. And given the number of countries taking part, the purpose became to showcase your culture. The winner, Amy Yuasa, showed that while the sport was about being creative, it was also about merging athletics with dancing. Sure, Reagan might not have been the most agile at the tournament, but she surely deserved to be on the stage like everyone qualifying to the Games. Because the same B girl has represented Australia at the World Championships in 2021 and 2022. And even as the world has continued making fun of Reagan, the breaker found support from her Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. The Olympics is about people participating in sport. That's a good thing. And Reagan had a crack, good on her, and a big shout out to her. Doesn't matter what people are doing, it's a good thing that they're participating in sport. It's good for their physical health, but also so important for their mental health as well. And I think that is the message of the Olympic spirit. It isn't only the Aussie PM who has backed Reagan. The breaking community has defended the B-Girl caught in a meme fest. They want the world to give the B-Girl a break. The other participants clearly were far better than Reagan. But maybe we leave the judging on this one to the judges. Right, time for last serve. Now, Serbia celebrate their Olympic heroes at Belgrade, Belgrade City Hall. The country won five medals, which included three golds. The celebration was led by none other than the gold medalist in tennis, Novak Djokovic, and the men's basketball team who clinched bronze. Take a look. visuals there coming out from Belgrade City Hall but that wraps up first sports here take care and I'll see you again tomorrow till then bye bye climate change is on our doorstep it's time for a revolution to take root and it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative. Across continents, one powerful news source. bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.
West Indies. Hello and welcome to First Coast America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital.